Hello, welcome back. In this video, we'll take a few minutes to explore the data that we've obtained in the previous video in a little bit more detail. And we'll ask some questions about how valid a forecasting prediction could be based only on the data that we have in this data set. So coming back to the data that we have for our Edmonton single family uh, home sale average price, going back to 2005, um, what we might want to do, it, you know, it's difficult to just start off looking at numbers, like these numbers are all interesting and everything, but we can't see anything about how these numbers change or fluctuate over time. So a really simple way to visualize this would just be to plot the values in a simple line chart. So I'm just going to select these two columns in Excel, and then I'm going to choose to insert uh, a line chart. And so once we do that, I'll zoom in here a little bit so it's easier to see. We can see what the trend is here, if there is any, in the average home sale value over time, going back to January 2005, in this case, through October of 2020. And so when we look at the data, a couple of things that I, I want to first keep in mind are, does it appear as though there are any trends or cyclicality in the values that we see here? So at first glance, I would say no. It looks like the data doesn't really follow any type of long-term trend. I mean, we could say that from going back to 2005 to today, there's a definite uh, upward trend. But if we were only looking at the data going back, you know, 10 years, let's say to 2010, and we were to look at it in this way, we would say that there really isn't much of a, a trend at all. Maybe a slight trend upwards from here uh, to the current date, but there isn't anything in here that tells me that overall the, the value of these homes is steadily increasing on any kind of a trend over time, at least given the data we have here. And that there's also probably no like cyclicality or anything like that to it. And, I'm not actually interested in the numeric values over here. I'm more interested in how we see uh, this value of the actual plotted line um, over time. So one thing we can do to get an even better look at this is just to adjust the, the Y axis over here. So I'm going to format this axis. And while it's good to see it, you know, from a base of zero on up, I don't care about the values. I care about if there are any trends or anything we can see in the data itself. And we'll be able to see this line better if we scale this up. So let's increase the minimum from zero to say 175, which should put us in this area here. And now we can have a look at this and we could zoom this in even more if we needed to, to see if there are any uh, kind of, again, little cyclicalities or things that we could find in this data to indicate that maybe there's something or fluctuations Maybe there's something that, you know, in the data repeats. Um, seasonal's already been accounted for, given this is the seasonally adjusted benchmark, but you never know. Trends over time, etc. So again, I mean, there's really no rhyme or reason to this data. We, we see some crazy spike here around 2007. And just around 2008, house prices come down quite a bit uh, through 2009. And of course, in 2008, we know this is when there was kind of big stock market uh, crash a bit of a recession and and we would expect housing prices to fall at the same time and then we see a slight uptick and then again down a slow scaling back up in prices and then a slow trend downward over time and here at the very end of what we have data for in in the late uh, months of 2020 we can see that there's a, an uptick in in uh, sale value so that's interesting as well and so we might want to start asking some questions about like, well, why is this the case? And it should be no surprise to anyone who's from Alberta, let alone from outside of Alberta, that without beating around the bush, let's just say it, we're pretty much a natural resources or an oil based economy here in Alberta. So what we might want to do is start asking some questions about, you know, what outside influences could potentially be influencing the, the prices of these houses and and again, while correlation doesn't necessarily indicate causation, we might want to see if there are other um, trends that are similar or increases and decreases in value that are similar 
to what we see here so that we could start to get a better idea or picture of how these forecast values are going to turn out. So what I mean to say by that is if we are looking to forecast the next uh, home price value. So let's go, for example, to the end of our data range. So here in November of 2020, right, the average benchmark for single family is 380,000. What we're going to try to do is make a forecast for December of 2020 to check, well, what is the what is the average sale price for single family going to be for December? So the question that we have in front of us is, if we are going to base our forecast value here solely on this data that we have in the past, which is only related to single family home uh, value sales, like is that is that relevant or should we maybe consider some outside influences? Now, to be clear, whether or not we decide we should include outside environmental influences or not is is kind of irrelevant. We're going to make the forecast based only on these values. But what it might help us uh, do is to make a determination of whether or not we have a high level of confidence in this forecast value, given any other indicators that we might be able to see in, in the markets um, around us. So for example, if we were to see price of oil you know, increasing and in a steep increase, we might expect a forecast value here to be much higher than you know, maybe only uh, $1,000 or so. Um, but, but those are things that we would bring to bear after we have our forecast value. So just to kind of, you know, bear things out, what we might want to do is investigate a little bit more the data that's available out there online. And because we have basically instant access to anything that we would like online, we can do that. So I'm just going to take the, the time now to go and check out some oil prices and we can see if there's any correlation there because I suspect that there, there might be. So if we go back online, we can perform a search here for, uh, for oil prices. Oops. And, and if you just do a search for oil prices, maybe it would be explicit and, and look for a chart. You're going to get a number of options that, that come up and they're, they're going to be all over the place. I like the trading economics, um, site, but really any site that's got a chart for you to look at is going to work. And so we can go and visit this site and with a few clicks, we can bring up, you know, charts for any other types of commodities or market value pricing over time that we might want to use to compare, uh, against our values. So in this example here, you can see we've got West Texas, West Texas intermediate, which is a, you know, a decent crude, uh, measure. But if, if you wanted to use other Brent, you know, oil or something, uh, metrics, you could use that too, but we'll go with West Texas. And so we want to go overall long-term in, in terms of time. So I'm just going to go to the 25 year time span so we can see what this looks like. And we can actually stretch this out to match what we have in, in our data. So I'm really interested in, in 2005, which is, uh, somewhere around here. Okay. So now we have a chart. Oops. I'm messing it up here a little bit. So now we have a chart that we can use to look at that gives us the price of oil over time in the same time span that we have our oops, our line chart for our house prices. And, and if we take one and overlay it on the other, let me, let me do this so we can bring them closer together. Again, this isn't necessary, but it's kind of maybe interesting. If, if we look at these, we can see that there is in fact some correlation in terms of the oil price and these housing prices. Now, how strong that correlation is, is a, a task that we can look at uh, getting into later on um, with like scatter plots and things like that. And, but we're not going to look for correlation in, in this example. We're just visualizing it to see if there might be any merit to investigating further the, the price of oil and a potential correlation to the housing prices. But we can see here, right, close, coming up to 2008, there's a peak in oil prices, a very steep incline in the price of oil. And that's kind of what we see mirrored over here in terms of our housing prices. And so it looks like around September, 2007, housing prices are going up. And, and so that kind of correlates with this. And then there is a sharp drop in the price of oil. And then we see kind of a lagging indicator here. So the, the prices of homes continue to go up marginally longer after this peak. And this was a, a steep drop and the prices came down slowly after as well. And, and then we see here an increase in oil prices correlated with a, an increase in home prices, and then a drop again, and then a drop, and then a kind of a slow incline 
And here again, we see a slow incline and then a, a decline here to the end. And so right at the very end, if we were to, to zoom in in the last couple of months, uh, we can see what's going on. Let's just stretch this right out. So from 2019 to today, we can see kind of how this plays out. Price of oil was already kind of coming down, um, but but the, the COVID-19 uh, factor can't be kind of like avoided here either. So there's a couple of different issues at play, but we can see a, re a really dramatic drop in March, and this kind of correlates with the COVID-19 shutdowns. So that's kind of what we would expect. People aren't driving anywhere, you know, people aren't flying anywhere, so price of oil drops. And then there's been kind of a recovery in the last few months here as well. And then when we go and look at our chart, uh, we could do the same thing and zoom in and we see that that kind of correlates at the very end here. So there's a drop and then we've got this uptick. So that's not to say that the price of oil is, you know, the only influencing factor. It may not be influencing at all, uh, but it gives you an idea of where you might want to begin to start asking some questions. So one thing you might want to do is compare the, these benchmark values in Edmonton to somewhere like Toronto, which is largely a financial uh, district town and 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 see whether or not the markets had a similar effect or if maybe we are maybe strongly correlated with the price of oil versus just markets in in general okay there's a number of different questions you might want to ask yourself um, before you kind of wholesale look at a forecast value and then just buy into it all the way so that's just um, a brief intro into some of the data exploration and analysis type questions that you you might want to ask when you're exploring this data. It's not necessary, but uh, could, pr could prove useful when you get into making these short-term forecasts. So that's all I want to do in this short video here. In the next one, we'll finally get into creating our moving average forecast values.